Hey you guys, it's me Danielle. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. This is where you can heal and love and find God's grace and knowing that he's going to help you to fulfill your purpose here and your assignments here on this earth, okay? And it's also a call to just turn back to Christ and, you know, to repent, be in a repentant state because we need to be in a repentant state with Christ and trying to be more like him, okay? And calling us to be more holy because he is coming back for his bride, groom, okay? So he does want us to be more like him, okay? And to be able to be the light unto the world to display okay his glory and his heart towards every single person here on this earth and how he does that is by us saying yes to being a willing vessel thank you jesus that he can operate through so that requires us to learn how to die into ourselves right and our wants and our needs and our desires which is of the flesh and then pick up our cross and carry it just like christ carried his cross for us and died on the cross for our sins, right? To cover that. And so he's helping to shape and to prune and to purify and to sanctify us, right? So we will know how to become more like him. Now, is it a fun process? No, when you're walking through the fire and you can refer to Isaiah 43, he lets you know when you're going through the waters, it will not overtake you. When you're passing through the flame, it won't even overtake you. Like he's gonna be with us through the whole process of pruning us, you know, of uh, trimming off those old branches and vines and things of that nature that don't need to be attached to us anymore. And whether that's people, places, or things. So we're going to dive into, you know, speaking about, you know, God's grace and how he will cover us and how he will help us, right? But how we also, when we do turn to him and fully surrender and cry out to him with a pure heart, right? and an open heart how he can really come through and transform us from the inside out okay and so i want us to really focus on going to the lord really asking him to search our hearts and ask him what is it still in us that we need to rid of and some of it's not going to be a good thing okay and you know some of us will have pride with those things like that's not me but then you're like oh yes it is right so I pray that this word blesses somebody, but I do want to pray really quick before we get started. But dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. We come to you right now. We come to you humbly, Father God. We ask that you just help us to turn to you in all ways, Father God, that we will die into ourselves and learn how to listen to the Holy Spirit and to incline thy ear to what it is that you are telling us and to search our hearts, Father God, and purify us from the inside out. And that when we do come to you, Father God, and ask for you to search our hearts, that we are willing to do the necessary things that you are asking us to do in order to cleanse us and to sanctify us and to purify us and to prune us. Thank you, Heavenly Father, and to trim those old branches off of us so the new branches can flourish and spring forth, Father God. We thank you that you will be glorified in everything that we do, that even though we may suffer, Father God, but it's going to be for your glory in the mighty name of Jesus, that you will have the final say, that we will have beauty for our ashes, okay? That you will no longer bring reproach to us, Father God, that we will be able to make it into the promised land and be able to see your hand and your work and the power of just how you, how much you love us, Father God, just by being faithful to you and obedient, that you will give us all the desires of our heart, Father God. And to learn how to not go before you, Father God, to stay in your timing within your will and walk hand in hand with you, Father God, that you will lead us into all the things that we want. But we just need to come to you first. You say if we seek the, the kingdom first, you know, you will give us all the desires of our hearts. So what father would um, a child say they want this and you give them something different? I don't know that exact scripture, but you guys can go search that out. But dear Heavenly Father. We just thank you. I ask that you lower myself, Father God. I humbly lower myself so that you may be exalted. I ask that you anoint my mouth with the right words to say in the mighty name of Jesus because I don't even want to do this message without you. I ask that you allow me to display authenticity through myself so that your people can understand it is okay for them to be their authentic selves, that you love them as they are, Father God, that they don't have the cover of themselves and that you love them because they display you. you everybody is created in your image and you want them to be seen for who they are father god you want them to stop wearing a mask in the mighty name of jesus and what the world to see so that they can really know who they are in you and finally reach the destiny and the plans that you have for them father god and we just thank you right now that you're going to free your people in the mighty name of jesus you're going to free their mind in the truth and in the spirit in the mighty name of jesus i thank you for even helping to shape and to prune me father god of my ways or things that are unbecoming of myself in order for me to walk more like you so that I can help to steward and be an example and the leader that you've called me to be in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So let us get started. Okay, so God brought me to 
Psalms 51 and we're gonna go at 16 and 17. And so, like I said, the message is why God wants a broken and contrite heart, okay? And why God prefers you to come to him with a broken and contrite heart over sacrifices. And sacrifices can be anything that you just say, okay, I'm not gonna do this, I'm not gonna do that. Well, that's good when he is, you know, convicting your spirit to rid of those things, but he really wants us to learn how to die into self, okay? And any brokenness that we have that's causing us to go search out you know, our identities and finding validation in man's lawlessness of the world, right? That we turn away from those things or repent, meaning to change our mind, right? And turn back to him because he's going to lead us into all truth because the Holy Spirit is the helper and he helps to bring everything into remembrance of what the plans were that he has for us and the assignments and all the things that he's going to all the wonderful great things that he's going to be doing right in our lives but in order for him for all of us excuse me and for him to do it we have to die into our ways and the things that we want and our fleshly desires right and that's the only way that you can hear and know what you're supposed to do and, and be in full joy and complete joy and full happiness is by you know dying into itself and picking up his plans because they're going to be way better than our plans amen so um psalms 51 16 says a broken and contrite heart for thou dearest um, excuse me thou di desirest not sacrifice this is the king james version so y'all bear with me else would i give it thou delightest not in burnt offering the sacrifice the sacrifices of god are broken are a broken spirit a broken and contrite heart O god thou wilt not despise okay and that is 16 and 17 of psalms 16 and 17 so the lord would prefer you to come to him with all of your brokenness your broken pieces your sadness your sorrow your suffering you know then to go try to mask it and cover it up by let's say going to work and trying to work overtime right so you don't have to face all the things that you're feeling on the inside that's in your heart that is keeping you you know unhappy right or in constant in a constant state of suffering right or you know if you're in your phone all the time or social media trying to escape your reality right because you don't want to feel the pain or let's even say in relationships you so sabotage your relationships because it hurts too much to even open up your heart back to those things again because you know what happened last time right he wants us to bring all of those things to him okay and allow him to you know heal us heal those wounds you know release those old things into him you know take up his he says bring your burdens to me and take up my yoke because it's light so he doesn't want us walking around with all this weight all the baggage all the brokenness all the pain all the trauma and nobody's going to be able to help you to get rid of that except for god so you can get into a relationship for example but you're going to bring all those broken pieces right into that relationship and it's going to manifest okay because you're probably going to be triggered and those things that are triggering you, you should take a deeper look in because it means that there's still a root there that needs some healing, okay, that needs to be looked at and why you're, you know, behaving a certain way, why you're acting out a certain way because we all know that whatever's in your mind and your heart, it, you know, it comes out, right? People speak what's in their heart space at that time. Even if they're upset and angry, you might say things out of anger, but, you know, deep, deeper than the anger usually lies hurt, okay, and pain. And so if you're acting or responding in a certain type of way or how you may parent your kids, for example, like I know that I was dealing with control, you know, and, you know, not wanting my son to um, feel pain, right? So if somebody hurts his feelings and, you know, want to be there to catch every little thing or not, you know, trying to stop certain things so he doesn't feel that hurt and pain because I don't want him to be broken because it breaks my heart because I, the Lord blessed me to be able to just really feel deeply and empathetically for people, okay? And... I can, I mean, I can't even watch certain shows. Like if somebody gets a needle in their arm, I feel it, okay? So I can really feel what people are going through. So when my son hurts, you know, I hurt. If anybody's in pain, I can, I can hear it. You know, I can feel it or whatever. And I think that's just the Holy Spirit always allowing me to see how he feels with, you know, things that hurts his feelings, right? So, um, yeah, that's not even in my notes. But, you know, just knowing that everything that we're, how you respond to situations, how you respond when you're upset, it really shows your heart space, right? And it really shows, you know, the, the things that have not been dealt with. And so he's trying to get to the root of that so that we can be mended back. But we're going to be coming out of this fire as gold, okay? In the mighty name of Jesus. So um, let's see. What else was I going to say? 
So when I was talking about the Lord wants us to really go ahead and pour out thy heart, I'm going to go to limitations. And we're going to be going to limitations 3, 14 through 18. I had some notes here, but we're going to kind of go with the Holy Spirit. And because um, he gave me some more stuff and I don't want to do it without him. Okay. So clearly what he has me going to is a little bit more important. Okay. So I said limitations 3, 14. I was looking at something to make sure I didn't miss anything. So when we start trying to take on our own will and, and, and just want to do things our way, it ends up backfiring on us, okay? Because what happens is it usually brings pain and suffering, all right? And that's why we use the term suffering the consequence, okay? So that's why God's like, I don't really have to punish you or anything like that because you're punishing yourself by the pain that you bring on yourself, the trauma from the pain of the experiences of trying to do things your way and make things happen your way and control your life instead of giving me your life and allow me to let it unfold, allow me to find your husband or wife, allowing me to work through you to know how to you know become a better, better parent um, allowing me to work through you so you can be in a job that brings you fulfillment which is really you know always supposed to be a job that glorifies God by helping to spread the gospel in, in many different ways and forms instead of you trying to um, do it because you want to make more money of things of the world right and so you end up working a job that you don't even like and it's sucking the life out of you and draining you right so we're self we're self-inflicting with that pain by our own choices and consequences due to the free will, which is why we should always adhere to the Holy Spirit and what the Holy Spirit is telling each and every one of us, in, each and every one of us individually, okay? So anybody telling you to go out here and strive and do it for yourself and God wouldn't want you to be this way or that way, yeah, God doesn't want his children to go without need, but he doesn't tell us to go out here trying to make things happen for ourselves, okay? Now, he will tell us to do things with the work of our hands, right? But it's going to be the things that he told us to do in the work of our hands. And it's, you know, because he already had a plan for the things that he wanted us to put our hands to. So that's why we should be really searching for the Holy Spirit, not everybody's prophetic words, not, you know, some itching ear, feel good message, but search the Holy Spirit go to jesus christ and ask him what is your will for my life what do you want me to lay down what have i made an idol in my life that comes before you that could be social media that could be um lusting after a man or a woman that could be you know um material possessions money um you know whatever the case may be you know anything that you put before god is an idol okay and then when we place it on a pedestal we start to just worship that okay those things in our life versus looking to god and he just gives us those things because he loves us that much okay out of obedience and faith in him right so the scripture i was going to read is when we operate in our own efforts right and trying to have control over our whole life you know um it doesn't allow the Holy Spirit to flow through us. And a lot of it is dealing with a pride test right now and the pride, P-R-I-D-E. And that's one of the things he was showing me too. Like, Danielle, I, I see all the hard work that you're doing. I see all the obedience you've been doing. I see all the faith moves you've been making because I'm living my whole life by faith right now. And I've been starting that since 2018 and trusting. Has it been a bumpy road? Yes. <laughs> um, have I had ups and downs? Yes, but he has still sought me through. And I'll tell you one thing, I haven't went without anything just by being obedient and trusting even when it's been hard okay because he does have to test us and prune us and make sure our heart posture is in the right right place so even if he asked me to you know go give and donate to people and sow a seed to people even if i don't know how i'm going to have it he makes sure you know he shows up out of nowhere and just blesses me just for my obedience and he's been doing that over and over again or multiplied or put money extra money in my account that shouldn't even have been in my account okay because he sees me or have somebody blesses bless me because i'm going out here still blessing people you know even when I am going through stuff, like I'll come out here and still be obedient when he told me to start, you know, this ministry. And I'm like, Lord, are you sure? And I told him I was going to start it when he told me to move. And I was being disobedient. So I came out here and he's been blessing me by it, you know, and 
just by being obedient, okay guys? So um, what happens in Limitations 3, 14, 18 is that when we do things in our own will and our own might, right? It leads to bitterness and derision. And it says, I was derision to all my people and their song all day. And he had filled me with bitterness. He had made me drunken with wormwood. He had also broken my teeth with gravel stones. He has covered me with ashes and thou hast removed my soul far from peace. I forgot prosperity. And I said, my strength and my hope is perished from the Lord. And so when we're going through that kind of stuff, all we feel is pain and we don't have no peace and we're filled with anxiety and fear and not want to move forward. And I know I was dealing with that too, constantly just, you know, worrying all the time and being in a state of anxiety that he's trying to teach me how to learn how to trust him and, and live in the present moment, right? Even, you know, with parenting, I find myself being so consumed, like with the next thing and the next thing and, you know, getting caught up with the things of the world. It's like, no, I need you to sit back and this is why I allow this time and pulled you out of the ways of the world so that you can have more time. He answered my prayers actually, because I said, I didn't want anybody <laughs> raising my child, but me and he fulfilled that. Now, did I know how that was going to plan out on the journey? No, but when I tell you, he provided every each, each step of the way and still blessed me with the desires of my heart. It's been amazing but at times I even look back and be like man I wish I would have taken more time even now sometimes to be more present and, and enjoy it you know we're trying to enjoy the moment the ups and the downs the struggle with trying to be a, a, a good parent which I know I'm a good parent because he always <laughs> tells me that through people people that don't even know me like you're such a good parent or I bless them with parenting you know with the things that my child deals with how the Lord has um, given me knowledge that helps other parents right learn how to parent with more grace and trying to be more kind and giving your child, you know, treating the child with respect, right? Because these children are a blessing to us and um, they're God's children at the end of the day. He's entrusting us in their care and they have a path that we're supposed to steward them on their path. They're not here for us to control them, okay? So I just want to put that out there. We're not here to control these kids. We're here to um, discipline and guide them. And discipline doesn't always mean, you know, you have to not be your child upside the head. It's mean you talk to your child you explain things and you raise them up in God's word so they never depart from it. That's not even in there. So, you know, just learning how to give our kids grace and more kindness, even when it's hard. And trust me, we have those moments and I have moments where I'm on, I'm, I'm good. And then I done lost my top and then I feel bad, but I always you know, apologize to my child because you never want to break your child's spirit. It's more important, you know, that we're not you know, breaking their spirit and causing them any brokenness by, you know, our thoughts and our ways and our mindset, right? So that's why God wants to renew our mind in him, right? And so we can put on those fruits of the spirit, even when our, when it comes to our parenting, as well as in relationships and friendships with everybody that we come in contact with. Amen. Thank you for that, Jesus. Um, so when we try to do things in our own way, we end up having a hardened heart and having bitterness and resentment, right? And it causes more damage and brokenness. Um, the Lord also tells us to pour out thine heart. In Limitations 2, 18 and 19, it says, Their heart cried unto the Lord, O wall of daughter of Zion. Let tears run down like a river day and night and give thyself no rest and let not the apple of thy eye cease. Arise, cry out in the night. In the beginning of the watches, pour out thy heart like water before the face of the Lord and lift up thy hands toward him for the life of thy young children that faint for hunger in the top of every street. So, you know, he wants us to come to him, right? And to cry out to him, okay? And to bring everything to him, to drop it at his feet. And the biggest thing, one of the things that my son has been telling me is surrender. Because the Lord will use your kids and anybody to talk to you, right? And I, and I felt like I was still surrendering. My son was saying this so much. I'm like, what else do I need to surrender? And then I started seeing the word like pride, right? And I'm like, I ain't got no pride. I've been doing But there were still ways like trying to control things. You know, even when God was showing me my promises, right? Then I started taking my promises to my own hands, right? <laughs> Trying to make it happen in my timing, right? It doesn't mean sometimes even when the Lord brings you promises or removes them for a short period of time or 
tells you to wait and the waiting is so hard, right? Because we would just want to be wanted. And next thing I know, I'm now that made that whole promise and all the promises an idol because now that's consuming my mind versus me staying in the present moment and keeping my eyes fixed on the Lord. And I know that we all have been there and that has been a struggle for me, but he really highlighted it to me and I grieved. I grieved today. I've been crying today, you know, because we're, we're dying into self and when we're dying into ourselves, it's like a death okay so it's like you want to a whole your own funeral because he wants to rid you of the past because you cannot take that into your new season okay and so he's calling us to be more like him more holy you know to repent of those things and to turn away from it and to try now are we going to be perfect no are we still going to sin and fall short yes but that's why he died on the cross for our, sin, our sins right because he knew we were going to do it even when i was like lord well i messed up you know i was like you're trying to make my stuff he was like it's okay i see you and i'm gonna link some songs later because he was right here with me when i was crying there were new songs popping up in my playlist like heartbroken you know um and then even after i finished recording the message i recorded earlier it was it says surrender it's a whole song talking about surrender so i'm gonna link that down there let me see what else i have um let me see if i can find the songs but i'm gonna link them all there um because i don't know all the names because they're all new so bear with me so broken hearted it was attention how god was talking about um i'm gonna link them so y'all can uh read the lyrics yourself attention was talking about god wanting you know how he's jealous and he's trying to get our attention because he does want to take us from glory to glory but he wants to do it his way not our way and so sometimes we just need to learn how to be still he kept showing me just to be still learning how to wait on the lord and be still and then he was still showing me all my promises he shows me my promises and confirmation of my promises every day and then i didn't want to look at the promises because I'm, I'm you know here with irritating because it's not happening in my timing okay so he was really working on me on that like you're not releasing even the promises for it to go and to come in a timing how i want it to go so now your mind is consumed on that what happened to me and it's so so often you guys we end up wanting things so bad and that we get impatient and that's one of my struggles is not having any patience for it and then we want to throw in a towel it was another song i can't remember the name of it but he was basically the lyrics were reading my thoughts like you know how you don't even want to deal with stuff or you're you know or you know i guess because when it's in your, not in your time and sometimes we just want to throw in a towel and i'm done with this or that but no the lord is teaching us how to that there there's a purpose in that waiting and, and half the time he tells us we're going through stuff because it's meant to strengthen us for the road ahead, for the plans ahead, you know, and learning how to walk by faith and not by sight and learning how to really trust him. So this pruning season, sanctification season, uh, purification season, right, it's not to hurt you, it's to help you, okay, and it's to help strengthen you. So we'll know how is to help excuse me, is to help strengthen us for the trip ahead, okay? My battery's trying to go wrong. Let me see what else. So, um, God, why God prefers you to come to Him broken with a um, broken and with a contrite heart over sacrifices, and you know why surrender your heart and brokenness is so important to God is that He needs us to surrender, you know, a broken and contrite heart unto Him and His will. Okay, the Lord keeps showing me, like I said earlier, the word pride. I'm trying to make sure I didn't miss anything, and how I was even been tested with pride in my own life. Okay, and not fully surrendering everything to Him. Um, so I think I touched on that. Yeah, I did. And so he did want me to let you guys know to go read Isaiah 43 because I've definitely been going through the Isaiah 43 test and the Job test. Okay, so that's when God, even when God is stripping things away from you, it's not to hurt you, but it's trying to build your faith muscle to learn how to rely on him. So a lot of people, he's pulling out of the world's way so they can learn how to walk in his way by faith and obedience and not by sight, okay? And really learning how to trust in him because the season that we're walking into, you're gonna to need to have all your faith in Jesus Christ because of the ways in which the world will be changing, right? And if you don't know that now, that the Lord will make a way for you, that he'll provide for you and put all your faith and trust in the Lord, it will cause you to stumble and it may cause you to do things to have the things of this world because you're not going to know how to be totally and fully and solely dependent on god and that's the best way i can put it because i don't think i've been released to top touch on that but just know that when this stuff that is happening in the world and it gets worse okay for those of you who follow me 
You need to know how to lean in on the Lord and follow his direction by faith and obedience and not by sight, okay? And how he will provide for you will be out of the normal ways in which the world is being provided for. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for that. Okay. Okay, I said it will take us to glory to glory. And even for myself, you guys, this is like the last little test before I'm, you know, crossing over the Jordan. So even though you're being tested, just know that um, we're being tested for a good reason so that God can search our hearts, take away what's not good. So we, when we get into this promised land, we're going to be very joyful that we even went through it, right? And so then another part I want to talk about is, um, let me read, limitations. about remembering God's faithfulness, okay? Remembering my, it says, sorry, limits, Limitations 319. It says, remembering my affliction and my misery, the wormwood and the gal, my soul hath them still in remembrance and is humbled in me. This I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because of his compassion for us never it fails not right he has total compassion for us and mercy they are new every morning and great is thy faithfulness the lord is my portion say my soul therefore will i hope in him the lord is good unto them that wait on him to the soul that seeketh him it is good that a man should both hope quietly and wait for salvation of the lord it is good for man that he bear the yoke in his youth right and that he sitteth alone and keeps silence because he hath bore it upon him so the Lord is showing us how to wait on him right it's a hard thing to do I've been tested with it myself Let's see my other part of my notes and so like the wilderness season is a deep cleansing guys is a purging and a cleansing of the heart the mind and the soul and the spirit right like I said he's pruning us of all of those different things because he wants us to be more holy you know and have um, what God, godliness looks like, even for me, right? He's been telling me ministering certain things to me, like even while I have a head covering on right now with prayer and prophesying, you know, I saw that in the Bible, I asked him if that's something that he wanted me to do. And the next thing I know, he started showing me signs of people having their head covered. Now that may not be for everybody. I'm not telling everybody, I ask the Lord to speak to everybody individually. But some people call things certain spirits when they're not spirits. It's just God trying to make people be more holy now. Don't get it twisted, okay? You can go out here and dress all holy, but if your heart ain't right, that is like being a whole Pharisee. You can learn scripture, know scripture, frontward and backward, right? But the Lord still also too looks at the heart because where the heart is holds all the secrets and how the Lord works, he starts to work through the heart. And once he starts transforming the heart, then it will flow outwardly. He's more concerned about the transformation from the heart space and then us giving him transact transactions, okay, offerings as sacrifice. He wants this heart of yours, okay? And he wants us to pour it out and he wants us to be more like him, all right? And um, when we lower ourselves, right, when we are broken, into pieces this is how god really works through us and he is perfected in our weaknesses okay let me go to second corinthians let me see if i can find it that's chronicles help me jesus okay we're gonna go to second come on second corinthians second corinthians 12 nine and it says and he said unto me my grace is sufficient for thee for my strength is made perfect in weakness most gladly therefore will i rather glory in my infirmities okay that the power of christ may rest upon me so you know when we're going through these things this is why he tells us too to be joyful and tribulation because through all of this stuff whether we realize it or not it is still working for our good because it shows his power right of how the lord will take all of our broken pieces and make it into something beautiful right but we got to go through the process we can't skip the process a lot of people want to skip the process they don't want to feel the pain but in order for you to be purified pruned and to have a new spirit a new heart you have to walk it through you have to feel the pain the only way for you to even 
know where the root is is through pain that's how you know what the suffering is about people only come to god most of the time when they're in pain and then they're willing to hear all right and it sucks it has to be that way but that's just a part of the process guys so um second corinthians 7 1 he wants us to cleanse you know ourselves from sin and you know try to be joyful in the tribulation that's why he says it and it says having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness, okay, in the fear of God. Receive us. We have wronged no man. We have corrupted no man. We have defrauded no man. I speak not this to condemn you, for I have said before that ye are in our hearts to die and live with you. Number four, great is my boldness of speech towards you. Great is my glorying of you. I am filled with comfort. I am exceeding joyful in all of our tribulation for when we were come into Macedonia our flesh had no rest but we were troubled on every side without were fightings within were fears nevertheless God that comforted those that are cast down comforted us by the coming of Titus and not by his coming only but by the consolation wherewith he was comforted in you when he told us your earnest desire, your mourning, your fervent mind toward me, so that I rejoice the more. For though I made you sorry with a letter, I do not repent, though I did repent, for I perceive that the same epistle hath made you sorry, though it were before a season. So even though we're going through things, we're going through things, and everybody has their season where they go through these things, the dying unto self, the, the Job test, the walking through the fire, walking by faith, you know, and it's up to us to really allow God to work through that, right? If not, we keep going through the cycle until we're ready to just be like, okay, I surrender. I'm trying to go around this mountain, right? So he wants us to be, he's doing this to help cleanse us from things that you know, so we don't keep having to go through that mountain and keep reliving in that trauma and that pain, okay? So he wants to cleanse us from all of those those um, bad things that have happened to us and, and give us something new, okay? Beauty for those ashes. I can't think of that scripture right now. Um, he also talks about godly sorrow in 2 Corinthians 7, 9 through 16. It says, Now I rejoice, not that ye were made sorry, but ye sorrow to repentance, for ye were made sorry after a godly manner, that ye may receive damage by us in nothing. For a godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repentant of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. For behold, this same self thing that ye sorrowed after a godly sort, what carefulness it wrought in you, yeah, what clearing of yourselves, yeah, what indignation yeah what fear yeah what vehement desire yeah what zeal yeah what revenge and all things ye have approved yourself to be clear in this matter wherefore though i wrote unto you i did it not for the cause i mean not for his cause that he done the wrong nor for his cause that suffered wrong but that our care for you in the sight of god might appear unto you okay so this is not to hurt you okay it is to help you to become more like him but in order for us to become more like him christ went through a whole lot of things right he went through a whole lot of suffering so people think that they're not going to suffer things and that's why he says it's long suffering okay love endures all things you know it is long suffering it's kind it's patient right the fruits of the spirit because he had displayed all that when he was living out here on this earth right to go on it says therefore we were comforted in your comfort yeah and exceedingly the more joy joyed we for the joy of Titus, because his spirit was refreshed by you all. For if I had boasted anything to him of you, I am not ashamed. But as we spake all things to you in truth, even so our boast in which I made before Titus is found a truth. And his inward affection is more abundant towards you, whilst he remembereth the obedience of you all. How with fear and trembling ye received him. So he's saying here too, like, the Lord sees is every, everybody's responsibility to work out their own salvation with fear and trembling. Okay, and so right here we may be going through a sorrow, but it's going to be a godly sorrow where God is taking all these things that we went through and He's transforming it into something beautiful. Okay, but while we're in it, it's really hard. It can be tough. It's a lot of like I said, diamonds itself. So it's a slow death. So you're not going to feel that at that time, but you're going to come out pure as gold. Okay, and it says, "I rejoice, therefore, that I have confidence." in you in all things right let's see let's go on to titus 2 11. let me see there 
is Titus. Thought I had my little marker in here. Y'all bear with me. Because I had to scratch my notes because the Holy Spirit is speaking <laughs> through me. So we're going to go with the flow of the Holy Spirit. Because I know I want to do it without Jesus. Okay. His way. Over my way. Okay. So teachings of the grace of God. So Titus 2.11. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. Okay. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Looking for that blessed hope and glorious appearing of the great God, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. Okay, These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. Let's see what else. When we go on to Ephesians 2, 1 through 10, talking about being saved by God's grace. Okay, Ephesians. Come on, Holy Spirit. We're going to work it your way today. Ephesians, as you can see. Let me go to the front. 1092. All right, so 1092, we're going to be talking about how he's saying, you know, he's going to save us by his grace, his grace that saves us. And it says in 2 1, starting there, it says, And you have quickened who were dead and trespass and trespasses and sins, where in the time past ye walked according to the course of this world, and according to the prince and the power of the air and the spirit, now worketh in the children of disobedience. Okay, he's talking about people, you know. We were still walking in lawlessness, trying to do everything for ourselves, being in the world. We're supposed to be in the world, but not of the world, okay? And um, how, we're lived, how we were living, right? We were doing a lot of things that were of the world, man's way versus walking in God's way. Sorry about that. <laughs> had an interruption. My child came outside. Um, so it says... Um, again, say by grace, and we're going to start from two, three, among whom also we all have our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace ye are saved. And have raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Jesus, in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might shrew the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are ye saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. So, you know, we, we know that God picks us and plucks us up, right? And it's by his grace that he chooses to not give us a reprobate mind right that means operating in pretty much the flesh and thinking that oh, okay this is cool like some people have been turned over to a reprobate mind because they didn't want to turn away from their old ways so he's allowing them to think you know people think they're living and what they're doing is good when it's still bad you know that's how you can have a reprobate mind that you're just operating and everything of the flesh and having no heart who want to repent and feeling no guilt or shame you know for anything that you're doing then you have I'm not going to say you have a reprobate mind because we all fall short, but you might want to do a heart check and ask the Lord to reveal certain things to you, all right? If you're feeling no remorse or shame, not shame, but no remorse and want to repent um, from doing things that's of the world, right? And we all have been there. Okay, so then to go on, it says, for by his grace, we are, ye are saved through faith and not that, yeah, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of the works, least any man should boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Okay? So God is definitely wanting us to, you know, know that he's coming to save us by his grace and only he can do that. But when he's trying to save us and prune us through all these different things and sanctify us, he wants us to come to him with a truly repentant heart and really turn away from these things, okay? To really walk away from these things of the world. And now is not the time to be playing with God, okay? He also says that we are to walk in love. You know, when he's plucking us out and purifying us and, and renewing us in his image, right? He wants us to not only uh, walk in love and walk as children of the light, you know, but he's going to help us to do this by putting on the new man, okay? And that's a new heart and new spirit. And so Ephesians... Back here. 
let me go here. So Ephesians says in um, 417, right? Well, actually, yes, 417. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. <laughs> I love how the Lord compares it. I didn't have that written down. So like I said, you know, people can be sitting here in their mind thinking they're doing something so right, okay, but you're wrong, you know. <laughs> it's just that you're operating of the flesh versus the spirit, right? So now you're in the vanity of your own mind, what you think is right to you, what feels good to you, and pride. Vanity means pride. Thank you, Holy Spirit, because I told you it's a pride test, right? Because people don't want to lay down their will, their ways of doing things to take up the ways of Jesus Christ that may not fulfill what their flesh wants for their life. It says on in 18, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the lie of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their own hearts, okay? Who being past feeling have given themselves over to the lavishness, okay? To work all unclean cleanliness with greed, greediness. But ye have not so learned Christ. If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth, as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for confirming this because I didn't have this in here. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. <laughs> and that ye put on new man, which is after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Okay? And he also says, Be ye angry and sin not, let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give a place to the devil. Okay? Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good that he may have to give to him that needeth. Okay? Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. And let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as Christ's sake hath forgiven you. So that was another thing too of us learning really how to have true forgiveness, like I've said in my other messages, and really having a heart check. So then we're going to go down to Ephesians 5, where it says to walk in love, verse 1 through 7. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and we walk in love as Christ also hath loved us and hath given himself us an offering and sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. But fornication and all uncleanliness or covetedness, let it not be once named among you as becometh the saints. Okay, because he wants his saints to be, you know, polished, you know, and without a spot or blemish. I have to find that um, scripture. Nevertheless, filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving things. For this you know, that no whore monger nor unclean person or covetous man who is an idolater hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. And let no man deceive you with the vain words, for because of these things... Come of the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be ye not, be not ye therefore partakers with them. Okay, that's talking about you know walking in the way of love of Jesus Christ. And then it says we walk as children of the light. And I have, um, let me just go ahead and read the whole thing. It says um, in verse eight, five eight. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now ye are now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. For the fruit of the spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. So he knows again what is in the heart space. Okay, he does not want people and his children. Okay, his saints, his um, chosen, you know, that he's plucked up, right, and calling to himself, which he came here, right, um, to not condemn people, but he's trying to bring everybody back, his children back unto him, right, and so he knows what's in everybody's heart, and he, he's, he's judging the earth right now extremely, right, because of how things have been operating on this earth, and so we want to cleanse our hearts, right, from, because he knows the secrets, you can polish your outside real good, but he knows what's going on in that heart space, right, but all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. 
for whatsoever doeth make manifest is a light. So whatever we do in the dark, you know, it's going to be brought to the light, right? That's why you see a lot of people, a lot of judgment and things being exposed in the season because he's exposing things. He's exposing the evil in the darkness and where people operate from, okay, um, out here on display. So y'all going to see a lot more of that, right? And he's shaking up the earth because of it, because he is not happy about it, right? Because we are called to love and to operate, you know, um, the way that he wants us to, okay, and be the light and how we're supposed to treat one another and care for one another. And that's not happening here on earth right now. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepeth and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Amen. Then I had um, 2 Timothy 3 1. Let me see if I can find that real quick. And then I'm going to tell you guys too with the um, 2 Timothy. Okay, 2 Timothy. Okay, 3. There we go. <laughs> 1 through 7. And he was talking about, like I just said, per perilous times shall come. Thank you, Holy Spirit. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, and unthankful and unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent. Fierce despisers of those that are good, okay? So you already know that there's going to be a lot of things coming up in the world. And people are so in love with the ways of the world that they despise even the good things that God is trying to do through people and, pe and his saints. You know, we will see some of that. Excuse me. Sorry about that. We will see some of that, you know, happening of how people are treating other people, right? They don't like to hear the truth. They don't want to do it God's way. They want to do it their own way, okay? Um, let me go ahead. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness. A lot of people out here have a form of godliness, but God knows you are really, truly for him in your heart. And he is separating the wheat from the tares because of that, okay? That's why he is really judging people because he knows in people's heart who is really repentant, who is really trying to walk in his ways. Are we going to mess up? Yes, but he's there to quicken our spirit through the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, to help us get back on track. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. Okay, so turn away from those people that are, you know, denying the power of God. For of this sort are they which creep into house. Okay, when they creep into your house, he's talking about they creep into your minds and your house and your heart, right? And lead captive silly women laden with sins and lead, led away with divers' lust. So if you're listening to anybody, which you should really just be listening to the Lord, and they're talking about a lot of things that is more pleasure of the flesh. That is, I mean, of course, God wants to bring us our desires, but if it's all about flesh and, you know, all about you, you know, kind of narcissistic energy, that ain't it, okay? I'm going to tell you that right now. Um, that's put planting seeds that still has you looking more at yourself versus dying up to yourself and your wants and needs. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of tr the truth, okay? And now as Janice and Jambres withstood Moses, so do... These also resist the truth, men of corrupt minds, reprobate concerning the faith. But they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be manifest unto all men as theirs also was. Okay? So, let me see. The Lord is really talking about, pretty much during this time, that he wants us to really surrender our will and our ways. Okay? And to really allow him to transform and work through us. Okay? Because he's going to give us the grace to do it and his mercy to do it. But we have to be a willing vessel and lay down our pride and our selfish ways in order for him to be able to do it. And right now is the time to allow God to do what he needs to do through us. Okay? Um, it is so important that you know we take everything to the lord you know like i said earlier you know what kind of job do you want me to do and i'm sure it's going to be something that's of your hands that you're going to do that he's going to work three whether it's writing a book whether you know is doing something with the gifts that he's giving you music that's going to glorify him if he's going to have you working anything it's going to start your own business you know even with the desires of the things that you're good at it's still going to some way you know show god god's going to shine and work through you right because that is the only he wants the only way that we can he can get his will really done here, which he can do anything. But the funny thing is, he loves us so much that he he put us here right during this time, and he wants to work through us. So you know he's you know 
going to get the glory from it just by working through us. And it's so sweet that he even chose us to even be a vessel to display his glory, right? And so we really need to just allow him to work through our weakness and to be exalted through our weakness and our suffering, right? Uh, what else do I have here? So it's really important to be transformed by the renewing of the spirit in Jesus Christ, okay? Because he's ready to fulfill these assignments right now. He really is. And don't worry if you have backslidden, you know, and if you um, have sinned again, you know, just repent and turn away from it and to turn to him and, and hand it over to him, okay? Don't carry it, okay? Because right now he's opening doors and giving keys to these doors, you know, to these promises. But we, you know, even while we're getting it right, he's still going to give us the He's still giving us promises, even when we're falling short. But he wants us to really be mindful of what it is we're doing, because this is not the time to really be falling away, you know, and, and working, you know, um, in the way of our will. OK, um, let's see. So I want you guys to know that Jesus is coming back for his bride and groom. And he wants his, like I said, his bride to be spotless. OK, and I think that would be Ephesians. Where's Ephesians? 1092. 92. I'm almost done here. And it was 527. And it says that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having a spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Okay. And verse 26 actually says that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word. And we all know that's how the Lord, you know. He talks through us through the Holy Spirit, the helper, but he also lets us study ourselves to be approved, right, through the word. And the word is his word, right, and what he's saying to us. So only you know what he's telling you to lay down and to really hand over to him, okay? And he doesn't want us to be deceived by the ways of the world, okay? Let's see. Um, and he's calling us to lead a life of holiness, right? Um, because he told me before when I was asking about the rapture and stuff like that, he told me that holiness equals rapture. And for those of you who don't understand, he's trying to heal us too during this season. And so um, how he's healing us is like like an onion. Okay, he's peeling back the layers and revealing things to us that's in our heart space or things that we haven't let go that's keeping us, you know, in inner turmoil, anxiety, fear, worry, regret, bitterness, resentment, right? <laughs> so, you know, just allow him to show you your onion okay and peel back the layers and, and accept it and know it's going to hurt but we're going to come out on the other side all right so let me give you some key words here really quick so here's some ways to surrender to god's will and what they mean first broken comes from the hebrew word meaning to break or to break into pieces contrite comes from the hebrew word meaning to crush heart comes from the hebrew word meaning inner man mind or will Spirit comes from the Hebrew word meaning breath or wind, okay? So allow God to breathe new life into you and over you through his rah. And the rah is the Holy Spirit, R-U-A-C-H is the Hebrew word, I believe. So to put it together, the inner man or the uh, personal desire or will has to be broken, okay? So that they no longer run after things of the flesh and of the, of the world, but to surrender to the things that God wants, okay? And I think I told you guys earlier, my son was telling me, he, he uses your children and people around you too. Like my son just kept saying the word surrender, surrender. And I'm like, okay, well, I felt like I was surrendered, but I actually was having so much inner turmoil with something of some promises that he told me that, you know, he was like, you're not surrendering that to me. Like, I'm gonna give it to you. You already know it's there. That's why I showed you in your dreams and I gave you signs all over the place, but it didn't mean for you to start idolizing it. Okay, it didn't mean for you to try to go ahead of me and make it happen for yourself. You're supposed to wait on me and let me fulfill it. How else am I supposed to get the glory? Okay, um, so I'm going to link some other stuff for you guys. Um, also, talk to the Holy Spirit if he's telling you, like, in all areas, whether that be how to dress. You know what I'm saying? Um, what kind of job, like I said, what kind, who, we don't date, right? <laughs> so you just, God will bring you your mate if you just wait and be still, right? So just consult him in all areas of your life. He will convict you of certain things. It's not to hurt you, but it's just a little conviction. So, you know, like I said, there's certain things that he was showing me of what holiness looks like and convicting my spirit. My flesh may not want to do it so much, but we should be fearing the Lord more than we should be fearing anything else. And right now, a lot of people, prophetic words that are not of the Holy Spirit, I would say are talking about all of these different spirits. And let me tell you one thing. 
we are giving spirits names that don't even have names in the Bible. Okay, that should be a clue. Now, the Bible mentions spir evil spirits and demons, right? But the Lord overcame Satan, all right? And if he lives in you, that means you already overcame and, you know, it's already victory there. Okay, so, you know, all these other little names for these different spirits, you know, what she was revealing to me is is, is false and it's all this um, pagan worship and practices in other places that is being contaminated with God's gospel. Okay, and allow him to lead you further with that. Um, remember that um, Yeshua is trying to help us live by the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, not the flesh. We are the church, his temple that he dwells in. And that's 1 Corinthians 15 through uh, 20. Let's see. I'm, I told y'all it's going to be long, so hopefully y'all are still here. 1 Corinthians 6. Okay. 15 through 20. And it says, Know ye not that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of a harlot? God forbid, what? Know ye not that he which is joined to a harlot is one body, for two saith he shall be one flesh. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. I'm going to go further because he's telling me to go further. 618, flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. Okay? But he that committed fornication sinneth against his own body. 19, what know ye not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Okay? So, you know, he bought you. He already paid a price for you. He gave ransom for you. Okay? And he came and gathered you. He, even though you've been scattered by the enemy, he's coming to gather you up and he's been holding you in his hand, right? And he wants you to glorify him during this time, okay? Because he gets the glory. He's dwelling in us and he's pulling us away from things of the world because he is. He loves us that much that he wants us to make it into the kingdom, okay? He wants us to have the kingdom and all have heaven here on earth. He wants us to feel the promise and um, he wants us to feel the presence of Eden, okay? Eden, they were brought into his presence and he wants us to be able to feel his presence here on earth everywhere we go. He wants to be with us and holding our hands and walking through everything with us. He wants us to cultivate that relationship where we see him in everything that we do. I know that I see him everywhere I go. He shows me he's here. Whether I'm crying, he sends me a song and he's saying everything I'm feeling at that moment. Whether, you know, I'm giving up my promise, right? And he's like, no, 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 hold on. And he's showing it to me or having somebody come up and tell me about it, okay? So he knows that we um, may have a hard time, but the Holy Spirit is there to help us and he's going to um, help us get through it okay also why it's so important for God to um, that we need to surrender our heart to him right is that um, when we have a hardened heart and we want to allow God to take the broken pieces, it's hard for the Holy Spirit and his love to flow through us, okay? Because it's like a little blockage there and he wants to be able to flow through us freely so we can shine and help other people outwardly because we're here to help everybody. It's supposed to help one another, okay? And help us to lead them back to Christ. And it's hard to do when you're being stuck and blinded and, and, and stuck in pain and, and hurt and you won't let it go. So it's so important for us to forgive people, okay? So God can really operate through us and work through us and work through us out inwardly so we can display it outwardly. And like I said earlier, the only way sometimes that we can even, you know, that God can get to us is through the pain, all right? Because nobody wants to go to him when everything is right and we're doing things in our own way. And so sometimes that's how he gets us our attention and he can get us on the right track. Okay, let's see. And know that, you know, we just need to um, be in a state of repentance, turn away from stuff because he does want to bring us to give us, will bring us glory to glory. And he will work, reward our efforts of faith and obedience and just by rendering our hearts to him, okay, and turn away from sin and unholiness. And God is not concerned more with outward transactions. Like I said, he is more concerned with the inner transformation that through the inner workings it will automatically show, right? 
and it will change how we do things. He doesn't want to have us to have that just routine of, okay, I got my checklist. I'm checking this off. Okay. I read my Bible study, you know, being like the perfect Christian or a Pharisee, right? He knows that we're imperfect. And he said with the people that were sinners and that were imperfect, right? And that's why he used the most broken people, the people that had a lot of shortcomings to show that he can use anybody and how much he cares for each and every one of our children. So he just wants us to um, bring um, our broken hearts, you know, and yield it to him and um check our heart posture and please guys pass the pride test and lay down your life and repent and pick up your cross and carry it in the way christ did for us in our sins not in the way that we want to for our life but his will his way okay and so just go to him and ask him what is it that he wants for you to lay down that be more like him okay i pray that bless somebody i'm gonna link the uh, songs below y'all I love you guys, and y'all probably won't hear from me a while because I'm just going to be consecrating myself to the Lord, but I do wish that and hope that this bless somebody because he does want us to have the freedom, and he's offering us freedom right now. This is how you become free, through truth and spirit, okay, and through conviction. I love you. Until next time.